If you're thinking about moving to Las Vegas or you're already in the process of doing so, then you're probably doing a bunch of research to prepare yourself on what it's like to actually live here. I myself have done a few videos on the major pros and cons of moving to Las Vegas. I realized I also needed to cover some of the smaller tips and tricks to living here that are generally not covered in the overarching top 10 reasons to move or not to move to Las Vegas videos. In this video, I'm gonna give you guys 17 different tips and things to know about living in Las Vegas. These items will help you acclimate to our city faster, spend less money where it's possible, and help you get that insider knowledge that us locals already have through experience. If you're moving here and planning on leasing a property first, then you should know that a majority of landlords in Las Vegas will only hold the property for you for up to two weeks. To hold it for longer might cause them to have to pay the mortgage or lose out on another potential tenant that's willing to pay the property sooner. Now this is likely not just a Vegas housing market thing, but I bring it up because in the past I've had people reach out months before they plan to move here and try to set up a lease way in advance, which is usually not possible. The best plan is to start looking for a home to lease about a month before you plan to come here. So you have two to three weeks to find a suitable home and then enough lead time, enough holding period afterwards to settle your affairs. Las Vegas's water supply comes from the Colorado River into Lake Mead. And because these are mineral dense water sources, we have what's called hard water. Hard water contains a higher level of dissolved mineral, but rest assured, this does not pose any health risks. The issue with hard water is that it impacts your skin and your pipes at home. You'll notice your skin's a bit drier after showers here. You'll also notice that your pipes will get corroded faster due to the buildup of calcium and magnesium. The solution is simple though make sure you get a water softener in your home. I tell every single one of my clients who buys a home here to purchase a softener because the investment is well worth it since you'll save that money in the long run when it comes to your pipes. The average cost of a new water softener system is roughly like 1500 and this also adds value to the resale price of your home. Nevada is an open carry state, meaning we have no laws prohibiting the open carry of firearms here. If you see someone who's randomly strapped just walking down the street, then don't be alarmed. It's normal and it's legal. We also don't require the registration of firearms here either. Remember though, you still need a permit to conceal a weapon. And there are many places where bringing a gun is prohibited, such as schools, courthouses, federal offices, etc. Also, many businesses may ask you to leave if you're trying to open carry into their establishments. If you're a gun owner, then it's always a good idea to look up the local gun laws. So I've added some links in the descriptions with that info. If you haven't lived in a desert before, then the threat of flash floods may not be on your radar. But trust me when I say, pay attention when you get a flash flood warning here during the rainstorms. They're dangerous, and they can cause your vehicle to get trapped as you drive. Living in a desert means there's a lack of vegetation to absorb the rain. It also doesn't rain a crazy amount here, so our flood channels and our wash are built to withstand a normal amount of moisture. Sometimes, freak rainstorms happen as they did last month, and our infrastructure can be overwhelmed. So if you listen to any tip in this video, please listen to me when I say do not tempt the fates and try to drive around during a flash flood. It's not worth it. Vegas is a commuter town, so you'll definitely need a car when living here. We have very few areas where you can live and walk to a majority of the shops and recreation that an average person would need in their life. Things are mostly spread out, so we have the residential areas and the commercial areas separated. You could rely solely on Ubers, but that could be an issue, which I'll explain next. My advice, make sure you bring your car with you here, and if you don't have one, try to lease or buy one if possible. You may not notice it until you're actually living here, but Vegas Ubers can get really pricey compared to where you're from. In fact, an article done by Business Insider last year had us ranked in the top 10 for most expensive cities when it came to Uber ride fees. During the weekend, the strip demands a lot of the action from Uber drivers, so surge pricing can make even taxis affordable. On a personal note, I just flew back from San Diego last week and arrived on a Monday morning at 11 a.m. My house is maybe 15 minutes from the airport, the airport was practically empty, and Uber wanted $55 for the trip. I was in shock. I know that pricing varies based on the day and time, but if you ask any local, they'll tell you that Uber pricing is not cheap here anymore, so be prepared. Get to know the freeway system here in Vegas because it makes getting around so much easier. Check out this map. 
As you can see, we have three main freeways that provide access to every part of the valley. I-15 is the main freeway that connects us to Los Angeles and goes right through the middle of the city, along the Strip, and through North Las Vegas. The 95 freeway zigzags southeast to northwest, cutting through I-15 and intersecting with the 215 freeway at multiple points. And finally, we have the newest freeway, the 215, which makes a huge loop around the city. In my opinion, the 215 is the most useful freeway to get around town when living here. And if someone asked me which freeway they should try to live closer to, I would definitely say the 215. I've included some links to maps in the descriptions if you guys want more infos on our freeways. You might think that moving to Las Vegas means you're gonna go to the Strip a lot. And for some of you party animals, that might be the case. In reality though, most locals try to avoid the Strip for recreation unless they have guests in town or there's a specific event that we need to go to, and for good reason. The Strip may be the lifeblood of the city, but it's expensive. The food's expensive, the gambling's expensive, the shopping's expensive. And I say this not because the quality is low, it's very high, but instead because us locals know that you can get great food and shopping off the Strip for a much better price. The other issue now is that most Strip properties have started to charge for parking. Coming for just a few hours will cost you upwards of $15 in parking fees, along with whatever else you end up spending on the Strip. Now, I'm not saying this to discourage you from checking out the Strip once you live here. I'm just saying, make sure you budget appropriately. No one likes spending time at the DMV, but just as bad would be taking time out of your schedule to go to the DMV and then finding out you need an appointment. So, when living here, check to see if the service you need requires an appointment first and make sure you set it up well in advance. Some services aren't available for months at a time due to the backlog. There are certain days where walk-ins are welcome, but the vast majority of the week is reserved for appointments. The good news is that there are many Nevada DMV services that can be done online or at self-serve kiosks around the valley. Here's a list directly from the DMV website. I've also included links in the description so you guys can get some more info on booking appointments at the DMV when needed. One of my favorite things about Las Vegas is the variety of hiking we have in close proximity to the city. If you love beautiful desert landscapes, then look no further than Red Rock Canyon to the west. Red Rock has 27 trails of varying difficulties, so there's something for everybody to enjoy. A day pass there is about 20 bucks per car, but you can get a Red Rock annual pass for just $50, which is such a good value in my opinion. My wife and I love to take our dogs on some of those hikes when the weather's right and it just tires them out. If you're looking for more greenery, maybe a temperate climate, then look no further than Mount Charleston, which is located roughly 30 to 40 minutes northwest of Las Vegas. This whole area is technically called Spring Mountain National Recreation Area, but to those living in Vegas, we just call it Mount Charleston. This wooded mountainous area has about 19 trails of varying difficulty, and the temperatures there are a good 20 to 40 degrees lower than what you're getting in Las Vegas. Mount Charleston also has a small residential areas with cabins in it, so if you're looking to go hiking for the whole weekend and you don't wanna to have to drive back and forth, Accommodations are pretty easy to be made. If you like to gamble as a hobby, or you just want to hit the tables because it's been a while, then do your wallet a favor and stay off the strip. The table minimums on the strip are high, and this can make it so the run through your gambling funds is quicker than you anticipated. Instead of going to the strip, try heading downtown to some of the older Las Vegas casinos, such as the El Cortez, or really any casino on Fremont Street. Their table minimums are lower, and their casino bars are way cheaper. The other option is to check out some of the local casinos we have, such as station casinos, like Red Rock, Green Valley Ranch, or even Palace Station. Like downtown, their table minimums are lower and their parking's free, so you're saving money right off the bat. We have a running joke here in Vegas. The orange construction cone is actually our state flower. In all seriousness though, get used to seeing these construction cones on the road because no matter where you live in Vegas, some of the roads will be getting worked on in your area or on your way to work. The good news is that Vegas is built mostly like a grid, and once you figure out your way around, it's really easy to avoid the road construction areas. Also, we've consistently been ranked as having some of the best roads in the country, so there is an upside to the constant road work. Vegas is known for its hot summers, and there's no disputing how hot it can get. What's lost in that weather discussion, though, is just how cold it can get during the winter months. We live in a dry desert, so the lack of humidity means the air can't hold the heat well that's radiated during the sunny daytime hours. So that leads our winter low temperatures ranging from the high 20s 
to the high 30s at night. During the day, the average temperature from December to February fluctuates from the 50s to the 60s. So be aware that living here means you'll need an actual winter wardrobe. Compounding all of this is the fact that Vegas is located in a valley, so it's consistently windy here. Ask anyone who's lived here longer than a year and they'll tell you, the wind chill, it could definitely be a problem. I say all this because I always hear, it gets cold in Las Vegas, and yeah, it gets cold here. If you're looking to join a local gym after moving here, then I highly recommend checking out LVAC or Las Vegas Athletic Clubs. They have seven locations spread around town and some of them are insanely large. A majority of the locations offer not only the traditional weights and cardio, but group classes, a walking track, racquetball courts, lap pools, sauna, steam room, and a jacuzzi. I've personally been going to LVACs for over 17 years and I still think it's the best value price-wise. And here's why. They do make you sign a contract, but the price isn't crazy for what they have. If you sign the initial contract of $23 for the first 26 months, you then become eligible for renewal at $144 a year. It's literally $12 a month for a full service gym with multiple location. I know people that pay over $150 a month for lifetime. And no, this is not a paid promotion. I just really love LVAC. One unique thing about Las Vegas is that many bars don't have a last call like other cities where 2 a.m. is usually the end of the night. If you're a night owl and you wanna keep the party going, then there are so many 24-hour bars and pubs along with a multitude of after-hour spots. Now, I'm not saying that all bars go all night. Many shut down around 1 to 3 a.m. depending on how many patrons they still have. The point is, is that there's always another place to go and usually it can be right around the corner from your house at a PT's or a Dottie's or any of the other local franchise bars all over the city. If you're looking for an area in Vegas that's centrally located with a lot of good food and activities, then look no further than our Chinatown. This area is located just west of the Strip on Spring Mountain and is about three miles long, full of restaurants, shops, markets, massage parlors, karaoke, etc. The overall pricing isn't crazy and the variety is something that you can't beat. I wholeheartedly recommend checking out Chinatown when you're living here. This tip may be obvious because of the summer heat, but make sure you get your car windows tinted here. The summer here can be brutal and your car's interior will thank you in the long run. In addition to getting a window tint, always try and park so your windshield is facing away from the sun. I can't tell you how many times I've gone to the supermarket for just like 15 minutes during the summer and I forget to do this, only to return to a car feeling like the ninth circle of hell. No one wants to go buy milk and come back with third degree burns, so make sure you get in the habit of parking in the opposite direction of the sun. Thanks for watching. If you guys have any questions about Las Vegas or our housing market, then I'd love to hear from you. Have a great day.